Hey everybody, Janet Jekyll Bates, and it is time for your next spray session. You guys probably just finished watching the lost spray session video, which was, it's not really lost, it was uh, maybe a little misplaced, uh, sort of. I, okay, so the deal with the last one is that it was a collab video between myself and Paul Bender, Paul Bender being an awesome YouTuber who is known for catfish and has recently relocated from the Houston, Tex Texas area to the Ozarks and is now on uh, somewhere near Bull Shoals. Anyways, um, painted her a craw and this was like back in January I painted the craw and she sent some really cool stuff. We got some hats and whatnot, and she sent the bait, and I repainted and sent it back to her, and, and we had both agreed that we were gonna wait until she got a chance to use the bait um, when the weather got a little bit warmer, as jerk bait weather, and in the meantime, she was from literally from scratch. Um, they're building a house, and I think they're still building it, but like they did it literally by themselves, like from nothing which is the most amazing process. If you, if you don't know anything about Pole Bender, go check out her YouTube channel and go check out her Instagram. Her Instagram's got a ton, a ton of pictures from literally from nothing and rocks and the mountainside to this really cool, um, I wouldn't call it a tiny house. It's just like this really awesome cabin type deal that they're building. And I don't, I haven't, this, I don't think I can remember seeing the insides of this house, but anyways, it's phenomenal, and they've built it by hand, um, by hand, everything, everything. So that sort of put a little bit of a damper, just to make a long story even longer, um, on her ability to be able to fish. Um, and you know, think life gets in the way of fishing, which really sucks, but it's stuff that we all have to do. So anyways, the the deal was that we were going to put the videos out together. Um, I went ahead and, and did the spray session. And then I conveniently tucked it away on one of my multiple hard drives, external hard drives. And then she finally, <laughs> she finally messaged me. She's like, I got a chance to use your bait. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then I couldn't find the video that I made. So I finally found it. I have linked her channel in the description on that video. Please go check out her stuff. She's a really good angler. And um, I'm really stoked that they're living like close to where I can go fish with them someday. We haven't done that yet, but we, we will. But you're looking at um, just the desk while I'm here talking and BSing with you guys, which is fine. Um, but hey, Lucid Vax, this video goes out to you. Uh, one of my subscribers said, hey, what if you just did a very basic stripped down uh, video only using these types of colors, the basic colors. So let's say for instance, you guys are just starting out or it's an affordability issue or you haven't been so consumed with painting that you don't have like hundreds of different colors. When you strip it down, now I have done a video in the past where I'm gonna pull out this old crusty color wheel um, where I was, whew, wow, this is, see this is what paint, this is why and on just a quick rabbit hole here this is why you need a respirator because this is airbrush paint dust look at that that's crazy so wear your respirators I get I get hammered all the time because they're like you're not wearing any the only times I don't wear respirators is when I'm talking to you guys and that's the honest to goodness truth it hangs right here I always have my respirator within an arm's reach but when I, I want you to be able to to understand what I'm saying but going back to the color wheel, if you remember the crusty old video I did on mixing and the color wheel, every color in the world is available to you through these. I promise you, every single color you'll ever need. But for convenience, most paint companies know it's a whole lot easier to get stuff that's pre-mixed than it is with just your basic primaries and your black and whites. But if it's an affordability, let's say you're just starting out, I get asked all the time, well, what, what patterns can I paint with basics? Everything. You could paint any pattern in the world with just these five colors. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some cool patterns. When I think about patterns with just primary colors, uh, green technically is not a primary color, but it's usually included in primary sets just for the sake of including green. But green is obviously made when you put yellow and blue together. That's how you get green. But we're gonna use just a pre-mix green because it comes in all of your starter kits when you get starter kits from people. 
So just right off the bat, what jumps out at me, black, red, yellow, and green, you've got a yellow perch, you've got a peacock cichlid, you've got, um, just with red and yellow, you've got craw patterns. With a little bit of black, you've got your craw trace and your markings, your, your segments. White and blue, you can do thread fin shads, bring the black in, you've got your accents. So there's a bunch of stuff that you guys can do just when you, when you look. Well, here's what I do, folks. I go to Google and I will I'll bring up any sort of picture of any sort of bait or forage fish or game fish and I'm gonna look at that and the basic colors I mean l look at what the market puts out for you guys just super stripped down basic patterns like this this is a red-eyed shad it's got just a little bit of flow yellow a little bit of orange on it and just one I mean, these are simple colors that anybody can make. That was probably sprayed with a stencil, but you can do the same thing on that shad dot with a Q-tip. I do it all the time for you guys. So I just start thinking about just stripping down your colors and using simple Rayburn Red. There's another one. I'm looking and see, that's, this is what I'll do is I'll sit, I'll sit and I'll look at stuff. So this, yeah, it's orange and yellow on the bottom, black on the top. <sighs> red and yellow make orange and you've got black right there so just think about it like that try and think a little bit out of the box and I promise you I promise you things are gonna jump out at you so today for lucid vax we're gonna do two patterns I'm gonna incorporate blacks and whites into both of them but I am gonna do a yellow perch for you guys we're gonna do that on a jerk bait and then I think I'm gonna do just with the other two colors, uh, the white and the blue, and a little black, let's do a thread fin shad. So the first thing that we're going to do is tape off. We're going to go from start to finish on this one, so I'm going to do everything from taping off the bill to dropping it into clear coat for you guys. And I would like to thank once again Lucid Vax for coming up with the challenge idea for me. Technically this is a challenge. I've been challenged to do just basic colors. Um, and I'm super excited about it because I really want to show you what all is, and there's so much more than just the blue, the blue and white for the thread fin and the yellow perch or peacock six. Like you could pretty much come up with anything. We could do uh, a mix down between yellow and and red and get some bluegill colors going on so there's just so much you can do with basic colors because all of your patterns come from primary colors so I'm using this is this is a very basic blank I think I got it from W lore um, very inexpensive the baits that I use I'm not gonna paint something that's not gonna swim right so everything that you'll see me use I have tested this actually swims pretty doggone good it's got a good twitch it's got a good bob and dive and it walks pretty well when you're twitching it through the water so that's this is one of the the pointer style blanks that is pretty decent out there on the market I think it costs maybe 85 cents a blank so we're gonna put some primer down I'm not gonna do a translucent or transparent pattern on this one so just a little bit of white all the way over the bait and I'm gonna put that I'm gonna if there's anything left over we're gonna put that stuff on the other bait on the wake bait primer that one as well and we agreed that we're gonna do a thread fin on this one so we'll be using that shad dot I'll do I'll do the q-tip trick for you guys Just get that bait covered. All right, good to go. We now have two prime baits. I'm gonna heat set this real quick. Well, first of all, perch are yellow, um, and you can even tent just a little bit I, again black I'd hardly use any black anymore unless I'm tinting the color so we're gonna just add this right into this white and when you do that it's gonna blend a little bit in this chamber for you which is kind of cool it'll kind of soften this yellow but we're gonna put all over put this yellow all over
And that is going to be the meat and potatoes of what this color pattern is going to look like. So while this is still a little bit wet, we're going to add some green to the top of this. And I'm going to add that right on top of my yellow. There's no reason not to. We're going to get on the face just a little bit with this. Just kind of tent that face off a little. Now normally if I were using pre-mixed colors, after I darken up this top a little bit with green, I would come back and do a moss green, a very dark green. But since we're not doing that on something like this today, I'm going to put just like one drop, maybe two drops, but probably just this one. And let it get all happy in there. And reduce the pressure down to about 10. And now, actually, there we go. Just put a little tiny bit of black down the top. And you want to do this wet so it blends. And this just tents it enough to where it's not going to make it look sloppy. Reduce it a little bit further. And I pressure down and then darken those eyes up. And then we're going to get a quick heat set on this before we add the red on. Now, we can do stencils on this one. One of the things that I was thinking is the pectoral fins on perch are red. It's not that hard if you have an X-Acto knife or even a pair of scissors. You could probably get away with doing something like this, but um, just for the sake of doing a real stencil, I'm going to come over here and grab one of these little cardboard backing. And we don't need a whole lot of space for this. So there's, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to cut this like that. And the reason I cut it like that is because on this particular um, lure, the gill plate is kind of shaped like comes down to a, a point, a little bit more of a point, we are going to add the gill plates with black. But then inside of this, we need to add, and I'll show you how I'm doing it. Matter of fact, it's probably easier if I draw it for you guys first. We're going to add the pectoral fins. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And this is not a, a huge bait, so if you guys can see how that looks. Then we're just going to cut that out. Well, that should be pretty good. I notched the end of it. So now you guys can see what that looks like. I have added some red into my chamber. Okay. I'm going to bring this over here. I'll lay this down. Make sure my pressure is low enough so that there's no junk kind of oozing out of the tip of this. We're going to come below the median line on this bait and behind the gill plate. And if you line that up, if you look through your cutout and you find the edge of your gill plate and your meeting strip and you go right below that, then you can probably match these up on both sides of this pretty easily. And we're not going to blast paint out of here. We just want enough to get that on. And there you have one. Now they do have two. The back one's probably going to be a little bit smaller, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to go ahead and use the same cutout. Now you have both of your side fins on. I'm going to flip this over and do the other side. And the reason I like to do those first before I do the, the markings for the perch in black is because I'm also going to come back and outline my fins with just a little bit. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Remember what I just said. 
And the other way that you can do this, if you have a little helping hand, little alligator clip deals, you can actually clip that there and that actually makes it a little bit steadier when you're uh, when you're laying this down. So find find your cutout, come right below the gill plate, and right below that median line, and there it is. And then do the same thing back here, and there you go. You got both of them on there. Now when we get this black, I'm just gonna edge this. Now I could. <clears throat> excuse me I could do that with an acrylic pen as well but we're going to we're just going to shoot black through it I need to get some water I've had way too much coffee you guys can probably tell I've had a lot of coffee this morning but we're going to get some water because my uh, my throat's a little parched here the other thing we're going to do while we still have some red in the chamber is just put a little bit of red on the throat just a light dusting of of paint the lighter the better and on this back tip and you'll get a better view of this when we kind of do a walk around of the bait before we're done with it now we're going to load black now traditionally yellow perch have about five to seven perch the they're like triangle points that come down and we could either create a stencil for that or we could do something completely out of the box and a little bit different. I love being out of the box and completely different anyway, so that's what we're going to do. If you have stencils, or if you don't have stencils and you just have like pieces of cardboard, you can use a straight edge, you can use a curved edge, but we're going to use something if I've, I've had it. Where did it go? You guys are probably going to time travel with me on this one. Nope, there it is. I found it. This edge. This is a cool little edge. And it, it works almost perfectly for stuff like this. So, because we don't want to lay this down on top of each other, we're going to keep this at an angle. And I'm going to... I always tell you guys to do this and I almost forgot to show you what we're going to do. We come over here. That is way too much. That's why we do our test strips. This is what this looks like. It's a very cool tattered kind of an edge but it looks very natural. And I've done that on some of the peacock cichlids that you guys have been watching me do on those peacock bass we're going to do the same thing here we're going to come and do one side at a time or one side of a side we're just going to try and keep these equal distant Some of them are going to be longer, some of them are going to be shorter, which is fine. And then we'll do a shorty right here. And now you know why I put these in before I do these black lines. Because it's easier to gauge how far down to come on your lure once you have these pectoral fins in. And then you just flip this and you do the same thing backwards. And you've got some really cool out of the box perch markings. I, I think it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, and it definitely is not going to look like any other bait or anybody else's bait when you do it except that when you if you do this now that I've showed you it might look a little bit like mine <laughs> but that's okay I teach because I love it and then just to get those tips in there you have it how cool is that
There you go. Completely unique. And we've only used four colors. We've used yellow, red, green, and black. Pretty neat. We're not quite done. I'm going to go ahead and drop this other side in for you. And remember, we're working back to front. Now one thing you might want to do, because the same rule applies, you want to get this even, right? So you can come all the way across the top and get that outline so that you have an even set of lines just like you would on a crop pattern. And I promise when you come down and do the other side, it's going to look like it was factory made. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just get this, get this line and then we can always give it a little bit darker of detail just to kind of hide these lines once we're done. Neat idea, huh? Like, hey, that's cool. There you go. Now, when you come down the other side of this perch, you've got a pre-drawn line. So we'll do one side and then finish up the other side. And remember, when you guys do stuff like this, you want to spray mostly on your stencil and not on the lure. Just kind of lay that in. Finish this up. Pretty neat. Flip that over. Make sure this is dry. Dry to the touch. If you guys are like me, then usually I'm more proficient coming at it from one angle than I am finishing it up. There we go. Now you have a completely unique and cool marking on your perch. And then just finish up those lines with that V-notch. And again, you might not have exactly what I have. It's fine. You can use your own deal. The other thing that I don't know if you guys notice in perch patterns is that there are some random splotches throughout on these uh, on these patterns in nature basically is what I'm saying there so this this is actually a camouflage stencil I picked up um, picked it up oh gosh a couple years ago I will say and then just come back on the other side and lay in those little random splotch patterns. But don't don't spray real heavy. And voila. A very cool, completely unique yellow perch pattern using four colors all primary colors we started out with our white and then we put our yellow in the chamber we blended pretty much all that stuff down the only thing that I want to do is come back now I told you I was going to do this and I'm definitely going to do this we're going to come back to this stencil on our pectoral fin and I'm just going to shoot the top and the corner and that's going to give it a little bit more definition. It 
darken that up a little bit and make it look a little more natural. Look at there. And do the same thing on the other side. Just flip that over. And bring this around to the other side. Uh, line up your stencil again. Shoot the corner. Shoot the top. Shoot the corner. Shoot the top. There you go, kids. You got it. That is a really neat, effective, I promise it's going to work, in stained or clear water, yellow perch. Anywhere where you got yellow perch in your waters, there's a real good chance this is going to catch them. Folks, over here at the finishing desk looking for some cool eyes. I could use just regular red eyes, but I want to add something a little bit unique. I use the living eyes all the time, and I don't think that this pattern is going to work with some of the really awesome frog patterns and whatnot. I could do, now these are cool, I got these from Dinger, but it's the red pupil. And there must be pollen or something in the air today because I am really, really getting jacked up in my throat. It sucks because I like to be able to speak to you while I'm shooting these. You know, this is this is pretty decent for. I mean, it's a basic red, but it's gonna it's a standout red. So let's put let's drop these. Just a very bright, smack you in the face kind of red eye. I think we've got our winners here for this particular pattern. Just a drop of Loctite Super Glue. Doesn't have to be Loctite. Gorilla Glue works. Um, although I can hardly ever find it because I'm sure it sells out faster than everything else. Generic Super Glue is fine. I super glue the eyes in just so couple things. You don't want them to kind of move around when you're clear coating. And eyes have a tendency to come off baits for some reason. Um, look at that. Look at that. Cool. They do. So if the eyes aren't super glued on, when that fish hits it, it's going to come off a whole lot easier than if you've super glued it. So go ahead and take an extra minute and super glue this down. We're going to shoot a still photo of this for you guys. And uh, I might, since I have a little bit black in the chamber, I might just go ahead and put a little bit more shading on the top of that. I don't have to. I mean, it looks kind of cool the way it is. But isn't that a neat, innovative way to make sure that your stripes are even on both sides? Just like doing a crawl pattern. Just like doing a crawl pattern. I know. I've already taken off the uh, already taken off the tape from the bill. There you go. I knew I had some in there. So we're just going to shade this up a little bit just to darken it. It really isn't completely necessary. Just toss a little bit on there. And there you go. Just kind of model that. I, I thought it looked pretty cool without it, but it does darken that up, and a lot of times you'll have a darker back on the top of this perch anyways. There you have it. We'll shoot a still photo for you guys. And let's go ahead and clear coat this while I'm over here at the spray bench. Put that down. Shoot that. And just get this filled up here. So that doesn't, I hate for paint to dry in the chamber. I've let it happen like one or two times in the last three years and ugh, what a nightmare. I hate it. So 
try and remember, even when I'm shooting videos for you guys, to get that done. We're going to use the one that's already opened. This is KBS. For those of you that don't know, that's what I use, a clear coat. And if you want 15% off, folks, um, there is a link in the description below. Actually, we use that to hang. We'll just go ahead and put this. Ta-da! Clamp that shut so it doesn't float up off of there. And let's go ahead and get our tail drip wire. I'm just going to dip this in. And voila! Put this tail drip wire on. And there is your yellow perch with primary colors and primary colors. Oh, we didn't even blend. I didn't even blend anything on this one. I'll just leave that over there on the drying rack. Stay tuned, folks, for part two. That's going to be coming up this week on your JBCO spray session. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Click the links in the description below if you want to save some money and get some cool stuff for inexpensive. If you want to see what I film with and the kind of stuff that I use, if you want to know where to get these or any of these paints, it's on there. Love you guys. Mean it. Talk to you soon. Happy casting. subscriber challenge for me that way you won't have to you won't have the lines on one side and all just you know i'm rambling okay companies that paint them this is not making any sense at all <laughs> that sounded so stupid i cannot have this much coffee before i make a video ever ever again <laughs>